Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the previous video, we talked about the disease diphtheria. Today, we'll talk about how to diagnose and how to treat diphtheria, which is caused by the gram-positive bacterium known as Corynebacterium diphtheria. The word Corynea means club-shaped. Now let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Diphtheria is a gram-positive rod. It is non-spore-forming. It is aerobic yet immotile. Corine means club-shaped. Corine bacterium diphtheria has mycolic acid. However, it is short-chain mycolic acid. And because it's short-chain, this bacteria is not acid-fast. As we have discussed before, Corynebacterium diphtheria is a gram-positive rod, pleomorphic, non-spore-forming, aerobic or facultative anaerobe, immotile, catalase-positive, carbohydrate fermenter, releasing lactic acid in the process. Corine means club. When you stain the granules with aniline dye, they appear as metachromatic. You can use aniline dye or you can use methylene blue. The granules appear on the club, giving it the classic beaded shape. The clubs are arranged together, resembling Chinese letters. Here's a club, here's a club, here's a club, here's another club. Corynebacterium diphtheria produces a small zone of hemolysis and it can grow on telluride agar. Corynebacterium diphtheria has the classic diphtherial toxin, which is an exotoxin, i.e. it is released from the bacterial cell. And it's the classic AB toxin. A is the active subunit for enzyme activity or catalytic activity. The B is for binding, binding with your cell receptor. The pathogenesis of the diphtherial exotoxin was discussed in previous videos. The reason why diphtheria causes myocarditis and peripheral neuropathy is because the receptor for the diphtherial toxin is present in the heart and neurons, respectively. The disease diphtheria was discussed in the last video, so please pause and review. Don't forget we have two types of diphtheria, respiratory diphtheria and cutaneous diphtheria. Pseudomembranous pharyngitis with fever and lymphadenopathy versus papules that tend to progress into chronic non-healing ulcers. The pseudomembrane is not a true membrane, it's a bunch of necrotic tissue and necrotic cells and inflammatory cells and some fibrin, that's why it's adherent. And this is the fate of the pseudomembrane. And the peculiar thing about the pseudomembranous pharyngitis caused by diphtheria is that if you try to remove it, it bleeds. And here is cutaneous diphtheria. Pause and review. Now let's diagnose Corynebacterium diphtheria. By microscopy, we have gram-positive pleomorphic rods. They resemble Chinese letters under the microscope. If you want to see the metachromatic granules, use methylene blue or aniline dyes. Next is the culture. You culture diphtheria on non-selective media and selective media. What's the non-selective part? Just blood agar. What's the selective part? Something added to the blood agar. Example, cysteine telluride added to the blood, so it's called cysteine telluride blood agar or CTBA. Why do we use telluride? Because telluride will inhibit the growth of most bacteria that reside in the upper respiratory tract, leaving diphtheria alone. Also, telluride will inhibit the growth of other gram positives, leaving diphtheria alone to grow and multiply. Moreover, Corynebacterium diphtheria can reduce telluride, giving you black color. That's the colonies of the bacteria here in the center. This is the telluride part. But how about the cysteine then? Well, Corynebacterium diphtheria has cystinase, which is an enzyme that converts cysteine into brown halo around the black colonies. So when you see black colonies surrounded by brown halo, this is Corynebacterium diphtheria. What's the name of the medium? Cysteine, telluride, blood agar, or CTBA. Next, we have Tinsdale medium. You will need to add some horse serum to make it stable. No pun intended. And the easiest medium and most practical to use is cholestine, natadexic acid agar, or CNA. Can I use a DNA test to find diphtheria? Absolutely. Nucleic acid amplification test. Can I use some biochemical identification tests to identify cryonibacterium diphtheria? Yes, indeed. Corynebacterium diphtheria possesses cystinase enzyme, but it does not have pyrazinamidase. As for detection, you can detect the tox gene or the tox protein, i.e. the toxin. How do I check the tox gene? PCR. How about the tox protein or the exotoxin of diphtheria? The ELEC test. 
And here is a little nugget. Let's say that you suspected Listeria meningitis and you took a sample from the cerebrospinal fluid and you found a gram-positive rod. Hold your horses and do not jump to conclusion that you have found Listeria. It could be Listeria or it could be Corynebacterium diphtheriae because remember, both are gram-positive rods. So be very careful. Here is the diagnosis in a nutshell. Pause and review. Prophylaxis, how do I prevent diphtheria? Diphtheria toxoid vaccine and a booster every 10 years for the vulnerable population. If you got in close contact with a person with diphtheria, you need to take penicillin or erythromycin to prevent the development of diphtheria. Okay, medicosis, this is for prophylaxis, but what if I do already have diphtheria? How would you treat me? First, we need to maintain the airway, because A, B, C is first airway breathing circulation i maintain the airway because remember the nasty pharyngeal pseudo membrane can block your airway and cause suffocation so airway first even if it requires endotracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation moreover since diphtheria is a communicable disease we need to isolate you to decrease the spread of infection from a person to another person next Given the fact that diphtheria produces a diphtherial toxin, we need to give you an antitoxin known as diphtheria antitoxin to neutralize the diphtheria toxin. And since diphtheria is a bacteria, i.e. a microbe, i.e. a living organism, bio, we need to give you an antibiotic. Antibiotics such as the same penicillin or erythromycin. This will get rid not of the toxin, but of the bacteria. But think about it. If the bacteria is toast, the bacteria will not produce the toxin. So two birds with one stone. But remember that the antibiotics will not neutralize the already formed toxins. For that, you will need an antitoxin. Okay, Medicosis, since now I got the natural infection, I have complete natural immunity, right? Not necessarily. It can happen with some people, but not with every person. In fact, most patients who develop diphtheria disease do not develop protective antibodies after the natural infection, so you will need toxoid vaccine. Quick review, Corynebacterium diphtheria is a gram-positive rod, non-spore-forming, immotile, releases exotoxins. Remember that the tox gene was introduced by lysogeny via the beta prophage, which is a lysogenic bacteriophage. Aniline dye, methylene blue, to see metachromatic granules. Cysteine telluride blood agar is famous. Diseases include pseudomembranous pharyngitis with lymphadenopathy, and you also have myocarditis and peripheral neuropathy. Neuropathy. Treatment wise, erythromycin or penicillin. Don't forget the antitoxin. Don't forget the toxoid vaccine. Let's review Corynebacterium diphtheria from Picmonic. It's a gram positive. Here is my angel. It's a bacillus. Here is the rod. Releases an exotoxin. Here's the toxin leaving the balloon. ADP ribosylation and inhibition of elongation factor 2, which will inhibit your protein synthesis. Chinese letters, telluride agar, metachromatic granules. Diseases include pseudomembranous pharyngitis, here's the sumo membra, lymph adenopathy, myocarditis, here's the myocard, and peripheral neuritis. If you loved this video and would like to learn more about erythromycin, penicillin, and the other antibiotics, download my antibiotics course on my website, medicosisperfectionatus.com. We're talking gigabytes of high-yield content. I also happen to have an endocrine pharmacology course and an emergency medicine high-yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.